Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to change a little bit out of theory mode into how it's actually being used today and what companies are using it for what. All right, so uh, I work for IBM. I run blockchain for Europe, which is uh, quite an interesting job, I have to say, and quite fun. And IBM's probably the furthest on in making it real, right, and, and taking networks live. And um, we've got some really interesting cases that I'm going to take you through. If Max has got this working, yeah, we'll be in good shape. We need the... Uh... Oh, well, I'll go with the old version. Yeah. Old version will do. All right, so um, my theme was, is blockchain hype or is it real? All right, and um, my assertion is it's absolutely real today. And there are a lot of cases that I'll show you which will explain that. Okay, how long okay. would you like me to talk? I'll, I'll, I'll just share. Yeah, sure. That'll be better. Um, how long would you like me to talk for? When will lunch be ready? I think that's a question on all of your minds, right? 15, 20 minutes. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. That way. Okay, so this is really boring, right? This is the hype. This is Gartner and other analysts saying blockchain will be really important. My assertion is you don't need all that stuff because it's here now. And the reason that I'm saying that is you see lots of little company logos up here. Every single one of those is doing blockchain right now in an interesting way, all right? And the big blue block boxes talk about what kind of industries that's, that's in, all right? And you might notice some interesting European names on this chart, right? So it's not in America or the Arab Emirates. The hotspot for blockchain is right here, right? So I would say that the two hotspots for blockchain in the world right now are London and Amsterdam and Copenhagen, places like this, okay? Right, so what gives me the right to say that it's here now? Okay, we've been working on this for a long time. Um, this isn't a very professional chart, this is my <laughs> creation, right? So in, in 2016, um, we were just talking about it and companies were saying, wouldn't this be a wonderful idea, right? Um, and then in 2017, we started to do a few pilots. The technology was getting good enough to do a few pilots. And in IBM, we love Hyperledger Fabric as a, a blockchain technology. We think it's the best out there. We, we tend to use that the most. And the first pilots uh, tended to be either on Hyperledger or Ethereum, okay, which are, I, I guess, the two hottest technologies for that. And then th there was a dynamic where we started to take customers into production last year. And I'll tell you about some cases of that. And it's actually, it's actually working very well. Uh, I've worked in new tech for a while. And one of the dynamics about new tech is you get very excited about it. And then you start to build things. And then it gets difficult because actually the tech doesn't work in the way that you expect. And actually productionizing it is really bloody difficult. Why? Except you get paid lots of money and we get paid lots of money for doing it. But blockchain's different in that it works really well. The underlying technology is fabulous. It's robust. It works. There isn't this gap between thinking it's a great idea and then finding it really difficult to make it work. It's actually working really well. Okay, So it, it, it's different to most. Uh, so we took the first cases to production last year. Okay, And then th this picture on the right hand side I was very careful not to make it a Boeing 737 MAX, right? So that, that's actually a Dreamliner on the right, one that actually stays in the air. Um, and the dynamics changed from launching production networks last year to you don't need to create your own thing anymore. You can actually join an existing network that does something that you want, all right? And that dynamic is really, really changing, I have to say. So... Um, Trade finance. Finance is obviously the first area to get super excited about blockchain. Okay? And we've heard stories about you know, central banks and, and so on. And trade finance was really the first case. And this thing up here, we trade. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is a bank's lending to small enterprises. Okay? So if you're starting a small business and you want some money, okay, you can now use a blockchain system called WeTrade to get your money, all right? And uh, there are a number of banks that have gone in partnership to offer that. 
So banks like HSBC and Deutsche Bank and Nordea, you know, some big, big names, right? And that's live today. So you could literally go out today and get some money from WeTrade on that system. It's really efficient. It's really quick. And, you know, the, it gives you a lot of additional features that you couldn't get any other way. That, that was probably the first case in the world of money flowing through a blockchain. And then, um, actually, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to go straight into the, the, the future. Okay, so the future um, that David talked about a little is a thing called STOs, which are um, security tokens. Okay, and they, there's a strap line that Bitcoin changed the world, right? So a, a digital currency, currency has changed the world, so money is never going to be the same again. These STOs will do for shares or equities what Bitcoin did for currency, okay? So it's the future um, of how companies will raise money, all right? And that's coming right now. And uh, David's company, Pillar, he made the assertion they will be the first um, to do this. I think there's a bit of contention for that. There's a, a company here um, that is doing ICOs instead of STO, um, STOs instead of ICOs, and it's going to be a... a a depository for these here in London right now, which will launch in the next couple of weeks, right? So there's going to be a race between David's company and this company. And it's very exciting, you know? It's, it's going to change a lot of things, right? So it's not just currencies. It's now equities as well. And it's becoming very, very real and very exciting. But kind of banking and financial services is a bit academic, a bit hard to relate to, there's a lot of technical stuff. So let's talk about some other stuff, right? Um, uh, w we've built a system with Walmart and a few other companies called Food Trust that tracks the food that you buy in a supermarket all the way back to the farm that produced it, right? And that's quite interesting because what, what it lets you do, uh, and I'll give you an example from a company we were working with in Helsinki, in Finland, is it lets you know the provenance of what you're buying, right? So you walk into a supermarket in, in Helsinki, you scan a packet of fish. They, they, they like their fish. They're very proud of their fish in Finland, right? They, they think they've got the best fish in the world from beautiful, clear Finnish lakes, right? So you go and buy your fish. You scan the packet, and it tells you, it sends you a picture of the boat that caught the fish. It gives you the date it was caught. It gives you a little GPS map of where the fish was um, hooked out of the water, which is kind of, kind of neat, right? So you've got some provenance. You've got some real surety of what you're buying, what it actually is. But then it gets cooler, right? You, you go home, you eat it, and you enjoy it. But then what it'll do is it'll send you a text and a link of the next time that particular sort of fish is going to be in your local supermarket. So it'll say, next Tuesday, there'll be a catch from that boat that you've just enjoyed. Why don't you go back and get some more? It's that sort of stuff that it will do, right? So it, it's kind of cool. Um, so that's another case, right? Provenance of food. And that's, um, that went live last year. It took us about a year to build. Uh, last autumn, we took that live. And... It's incredibly, uh, we expected it to be a slow takeoff, but it's taken off incredibly quickly. All right, and lots of companies in Europe are buying into this uh, and taking it, right? So France has got into it big time. All the supermarkets in France are buying into this stuff. Um, the Nordics, all, all around Europe. The, the UK is a bit slow, I have to say, but everywhere else seems to be getting it. All right, so that's, that's another case. Less esoteric than your finance stuff. Um, and here's another one. There's a, a system called Trade Lens, and horrible, boring name. But what this is, is it's tracking every container being moved across the sea. Okay? So we, we partner with Maersk, and we have a system now that tracks containers moving across the sea. All right? And that sounds a little bit dull, all right? but it's really cool, because it lets you know where your stuff is. So if you've bought something from China... It lets you know where it is at any one time, which is kind of one thing. And you wouldn't believe how awful the current system is if you, if you buy something. You don't really know where your stuff is. And it takes a lot of time for paperwork to get filed. 
And what that means is you have to borrow money for longer than it's necessary, right? So in the new system, you know where it is. As soon as the container goes on the boat, you get your trade finance, you pay for it. As soon as it comes off the boat, you know, that, that is settled. And it means you need to borrow money for less time. Therefore, it's cheaper. And the, the system is really smart, I have to say. And it's working, and it's live now. OK, so that's another, another example, OK? I'm not going to show you a video. It's a bit boring. Um, now, here's another thing. We, we talked about identity. And here's another use case for blockchain that's up and working right now. The, the method of identifying yourself on the internet, right? we use certificates to identify ourselves. And that is horribly antiquated rubbish technology for being able to identify yourself because it's a centralized system working with the internet which is distributed and powered by people and lots of separate computers. And the, and the two don't go together very well, right? So we're using archaic technology to identify ourselves um, on the internet. And we shouldn't have to do that. So we're going to use a blockchain system which is fundamentally distributed so you can seize control of your own identity and manage it yourself as an individual, right, using blockchain technology. So instead of having to rely on some third party to identify yourself, you'll be able to use blockchain technology to seize control of that and do it yourself in a distributed way. And then you have distributed identity working with a distributed blockchain and the two match up really nicely and work together really well. And this is being built Right now, it will launch maybe by the middle of this year. And I think the way that certificates and identity is managed in the future will fundamentally change this year forever. OK? Right. Now, here's the thing. Um, here's another one. Um, Cross-border payments. So if you want to send money from here um, abroad to some other currency, it's really expensive, and you have to give your money to some uh, payments provider, and they take a huge margin for doing so, for doing absolutely very little in most cases, right? Um, and it makes sense if there is a, uh, a way to disintermediate some of these people who don't add a lot of value and take a lot of money from you for moving money about. And th there are various blockchain solutions being developed for this, which, again, will change how this is done forever. And I don't think we'll ever go back to the old way. You know, it's, it's time's here, and it's coming right now. Um, so th this is quite topical. So we'll launch this thing called Worldwire next week. So I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but next week there will be a solution called Worldwire that will let you pump money um, from one currency to another on a blockchain. Uh, live, it'll be very cheap, it'll be very fast, it'll be settled in real time. So if you want to move money from uh, GB pounds to, I don't know, some strange esoteric Eastern European country, you'll be able to do it in real time, it'll be settled in real time, and the commission will be tiny small. Okay? And that'll all be powered on blockchain, and it's real as of next week. Okay? Um, cool. I've broken it. That's all I wanted to say, right? Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. There are, the, the theme for me is let's stop theorizing about it. It's not the future. It's real productionizable right now. Very exciting, I have to say. It's a great, great tech to get into. So you, if you're a student and you're thinking, would this be a good thing to do in my future after university, I'd say, yeah, it's, it's really cool tech. It's really interesting to work in. It's quite well paid, I have to say, as well. So, you know, that's kind of a good thing. And there are lots of companies in London, lots of small startups, lots of small fintechs who are working on this, who are America's behind. It's just fabulous, right? So for us as Europeans, where the Americans are always a couple of years ahead and it pisses us all off, we're actually leading. So no question the UK is ahead in the blockchain world right now, OK? All right, um, any questions? I think they want lunch, Max. <laughs> I just have one question. I was wondering how large is the blockchain team versus the developer team? Oh, that's a good question. 
Um, so Hyperledger Fabric, which we really like as a blockchain, we do about 90% of our work on Hyperledger Fabric, is open source, right? So the, there's a collaboration of 250 companies working together to develop it. Um, in the latest release, we've got about 200 people working on the latest release, so Hyperledger Fabric version 2. It's about 200 people developing that, but also people from Airbus, Morgan Stanley, some of your boys from Accenture are working on it. You know, so that it's a big collaboration. And any, any new tech, right, the, there's a race, there's an evolution. It's like the dinosaurs, right? Um, dinosaurs versus mammals, who's going to evolve the fastest and, you know, survive? Um, and there may be... 40, 50 blockchains out there right now. You know, so some are good, some are not so good. But whether they're good or not isn't the question, really. It's how quick are they going to evolve so that they stay ahead of the others. Because if you roll forward maybe three years, of those 50 blockchains, only four or five will survive, right? And the ones that will survive are the ones that have the most developers. So developers are the key thing, all right? So there's a fight for the best blockchain de developers on the planet. And if your network can't get the good ones or enough of them, it's not going to evolve fast enough and you're in trouble. Okay? So bet smart with your, your blockchain. Okay? And in IBM terms, I mean, we, we've got about 500 people in Europe working on blockchain. So it's a lot. It's a big investment. And there's quite a lot of money coming in already. It's kind of, kind of going well. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit on the process of how has, uh, how has it been to convince companies, convince yeah. corporations to jump onto this new technology? How hard has it been and yeah. how is it still? It's been unique, yeah. right? So if you have a new piece of technology, it's genuinely pretty hard to convince somebody to spend money on it, right? So most companies fear new stuff, right? And they don't like to be the first and it's quite a big risk for them. But in terms of blockchain, it's been the opposite. So companies have been banging our door down to talk to us and, and get a proposition because they know it's going to change the way business is done. And particularly, it's going to disintermediate some companies. Some companies' business will go away because of blockchain. So actually, the boards of companies, so people like the chief exec or CFO, are really urgently wanting to talk to people who know what they're talking about. So actually they're contacting us rather than the other way around, which I've worked in IT for a long time. That's the first time it's ever happened to me, right? Um, so it's the opposite of how it normally is, right? They, they, uh, I had a, a CFO of an insurance company call me last week, found me on LinkedIn, called me and said, I, I need to get a proposition on blockchain. Um, the, the board needs one help me, you know, and that just never happens. You know. Normally you're kicking doors down and trying to talk to people and it's hard, but it's the reverse this time. Sure. Uh, um, Accenture are our friends, by the way. Normally we're enemies on pretty much everything, but in this instance we're friends. We work sure. together. <laughs> um, indeed. No, um, no, we do have a lot of... I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned our three quarter, but we mm. do a lot of... Yeah, uh, Corda's good. Well, Nothing wrong with Corda. Um, it's on interoperability, because mm -hmm. obviously we have these legacy systems, and they will be around for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and we have done work, Accenture has done work on interoperability between blockchains, mm -hmm. and we've been successful. But I see the need for more interoperability between existing yeah. systems and blockchain. How, how do you see that? Because I, I yeah. think there is the, 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 the legacy constraint is, is huge. And, mm -hmm. and because, as you said, um, it will change the architecture of how things are being done. Yeah. Um, we cannot get rid of the legacy, so we have to find a way to sort of make it interoperable. How, how do you see it? Well, the, uh, two parts to the answer, right? So, so number one, lots of people come and say, I'd like to build a blockchain for this particular thing. And quite often it's a bad idea because they've got blockchain in their head, it's really trendy, it's cool, I, I want to build a blockchain for this. And the first question you need to ask is, is it the right tech for it? Because... Um, you could do it more cheaply and easily quite often just using you know, old-fashioned stuff. All right, so you need to make sure it's the right use case and they're not getting overexcited, part one. 
Um, and then part two, yeah, there needs to be a huge amount of interoperability. And whether you like it or not, the futures, Amazon and Azure and various clouds out there, and we need to get them all talking together and talking to the old fashioned computer systems in, in the companies. And actually, that's where the difficulty is. The blockchain tech is relatively straightforward. It's all the integration with the existing stuff that's really hard. And that's why they need people like you and I and they pay us the big bucks, you know? So. Anyway, uh, any other questions?